Good day, folks. I tried to go live earlier, but it wasn't working. I'm using OBS Studio, and it feels like it works when it wants to. I don't know what I'm doing wrong here, but um, it saves videos locally, but when I click on Start Streaming, it sends a blank. It says everything is fine, but now it's just streaming a blank screen, even though it saves the video fine. So I have no clue what's going on with that. So maybe people could recommend the software or something they use for live streaming. There must be something better than OBS. But anyways, um, I wanted to make a live, but I couldn't because this is pretty significant here. And it's the evolution of my PCB idea about switching both sides, you know, the inductive kickback. And then I started thinking about it, folks, you know. And then I started thinking about the... Um, Basically, the Bedini switches that I've worked around the um, years here and the various methods I've shared through cap dumps and isolation and transformers and hybrids. and But the thing with that is no matter what, even Bedini knew this, um, whatever method you want to use, it all has its pros and cons and mostly in losses. You see, most people anyways, most have a hard time with the idea of trying to loop the Bedini type inductive kickback, you know, having a self-running system. That is the goal of a lot of people, and even Bedini himself felt it was too complicated, so it was better to just switch batteries or make complicated switching devices around that so the process would be automatic, but anyhow, he, he felt that it was easier to just dump the spike in something isolated from the input than trying to... And there's a lot of variance too, because the phase has to match, and you know, a lot of people with multiple coils had been okay if once they know because when the wheel spins you, you could actually calculate that, right? But in a solid state system, it's a little bit more complicated. So, um, and obviously, those that try to uh, send the spike back with the regular diode, you know, you end up shorting the thing. You can't really do it that way. So, I started thinking, I was looking at my PCP, and I guess everything happens for a reason. I had to pay for my domain this month, so I wasn't able to buy the PCP I was going to order, which is, I guess, a good for bad because I enhanced on it. And, you know, without the full circuit diagram, here's the concept I want to share with you for now. And this is basically my solution to being able to capture a good part. The most efficient I can think of without the traditional losses we always have with uh, the um, whether we're trying to run it through an inverter and sending it back or isolating it through a transformer, those all loss, 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 right? So it would be nice to just send it right back into the input directly. Well, apparently it's pretty easy, and I don't know why this then occurred to me. I guess while I was looking at my uh, switching the inductive kickback, I said, well, since we're already this far, it would just be a far stretch to modify. It wouldn't be anyways, the circuit. So here it is, basically the concept as a diagram. So you have a pulse width modulator, 4K or higher, variable um, square wave duty cycle, 1 to 5%, so we can properly switch our coil like we would normally do. But we'll be switching MOSFETs, so you have to make sure the gate driver is within the MOSFET range. So what you want to do here is you want to switch both MOSFETs at the same time on each side of the coil. And what's really interesting is if you use two diodes, not one, but two diodes on each side of the coil, you see here, and it's set in reverse. So when the MOSFET switches our pulse power source, which could be most likely a battery, it... Um, it, it doesn't really do anything because it's, it's in reverse, so it doesn't conduct in that direction. But when the inductive kickback kicks in and the switch is in off mode, then it diverts the whole power back into the front bus of your pulse or your battery. So this is a way of doing it, folks, without having to worry, geez, is the phase right? Do I have a loss or whatever? It's the most direct way of doing it. So this is, I'm really excited because, you know, it's like, for me anyways, this potentially changes the whole dynamics of my research on where I can take this from next. So if you understand here where we have the two diodes, right on the output of each diode, those could be an energy taps to charge, assuming you have a strong enough inductive kickback. You just slap a full bridge rectifier on each side of these diodes here to complete the loop through the rectifier and now you're able to charge each their own 12 volt batteries and whatever's left over 
goes back into the front battery without having to worry about it. The system basically self-reengages itself and does everything it needs and whatever's left over will and what's nice about this is basically it's almost indestructible. You know, how do you um, blow up any components like this? Because no matter what, it always goes to a load. And the MOSFETs are, are disconnected when the inductive kickback hits back the power source. And that's the importance of having the isolated pulse width modulator and the MOSFET driver isolated from what you're actually pulsing the coil with so you're able to control the dynamics that way so this is what I'll be working on mod slight modification to the circuit to make it work like that and it just seems to make sense to me right doesn't it folks to just run our inductive kickback coils in this way it just simplifies the whole recycling process now you see this is very exciting because I could actually someone like me now can take this another step have you ever thought about, you know, running a motor, a regular DC motor, that is the motor and the generator as, the, as one part, at, not like the motor driving it, but the motor actually being the generator and the motor. See what I'm getting at? We place that coil there with a motor. You'll essentially have the same dynamics. The motor is love pulse with modulation, by the way. And the motor... <laughs> will recover the inductive kickback back into the source that that's actually powering it. You see what I'm getting at? So you can use your motor to give you that inductive kickback to recover a big part of the energy that drove the motor. Now, thinking further than our noses, folks, what could we use the mechanical force of the motor for without actually loading it down? We don't want to load things down, but we want to take advantage of systems, right? So back to my idea of using the electrostatic wheels. Electrost a set of electrostatic wheels for your very, very high potential in the hundreds of kilovolts range won't really load. It's going to be the equivalent of putting a little wind blade on there. Very, very slight load on the motor. The motor, as far as it is concerned, would hardly feel that it's driving a set of electrostatic discs. You see what I'm getting at, folks? You use the generator, well, not the generator, the motor as a generator, but the mechanical force also drives an electrostatic motor, so it's a mechanical way of getting a very, very, very high potential, which is what we're looking for, with very minimal work, and being able to recycle a good part of that energy doing it at the same time. So now you've got your high electrostatic potential, and heck, you could even use a mechanical belt or something as far as make sure you isolate it far enough from the electrostatic. But the electrostatic could charge a cap. The belt can run a mechanical cap dump. Again, very minimal strain on the motor because we don't want to run the motor on another generator on a closed loop going all that you, to feel that, that work, you know, of it fighting against itself. So, quote unquote, you know, keeping the loop open as much as we can in a motor mechanical sense, that would be, you know, driving the load of the mechanical motor as minimal as we can to get as much of a job done as we can with it. And the electrostatic is just, it just makes sense, folks, right? You know, so you can picture a device here developing pretty um, um, remarkable, if you ask me. So very positive with all of this. And I really like where I think it's going to take me and it's going to take us. And I will um, work on this month developing the circuit for this and hopefully being able to sell a few prototypes. And again, folks, no promises. This is all research, active development, but maybe we can do it more together, testing different coils. You know, we're going to be in a big positive if we can recover the spike with minimal, you know, interference in a way and loss and all that. So just where I'm at, and I hope you enjoy and find the information useful. And I'm looking forward to your comments as always. And until ne next time, folks.